Hi, uh, welcome to the session on uh, CMA part one. In today's session, we'll discuss about uh, cash flow statement. In the previous sessions, we discussed about financial statements like income statement, rate and earnings statement, statement of financial position. Uh, in today's session, we concentrate on cash flow statement. Cash flow statement. A cash flow statement is also known as statement of cash flows. It is prepared as per international accounting standards seven. So we have a standard format for cash flow statement. A cash flow statement tells us that what is the source of cash? What is the source of cash? And where did cash come from? Where did cash go? In other words, we can see the reasons for increase or decrease in cash balance. Whether the cash balance increased for the acquisition of assets or borrowing money for borrowing money or rising of capital and how the cash decreased. Whether we paid for operating expenses, we purchased some assets or we repaid our loans, etc. So cash flow statement tells us where did cash come from? You can find the answers for these two questions. Where did cash come from and where did cash go? We can answer these questions. We can find the answers for these questions cash inflow and cash outflow. Where did cash come from and where did cash go? A cash flow statement is prepared in three sections, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. It is to be prepared in three sections, cash flows from operating activities, cash flows from investing activities, and cash flows from financing activities. We need to prepare cash flow statement to know the cash ins and cash outs because our income statement is prepared on accrual statement, accrual method. So the, the outcome of the income statement is either net income or net loss, which is which is found by you know, considering all the expenses and all the revenues, irrespective whether they are cash, whether they are received in cash or not, irrespective whether they are paid in cash or not, because we use accrual system. Therefore, when you see the net income in the cash balance, the cash balance does not match with the net income. In other words, net income is only a difference between revenues and expenses but not difference between cash inflows and cash in outflows besides this cash inflow and outflow take place due to many other reasons like we we might have sold some old assets which is nowhere found in, in the income statement we, we might have purchased some you know new assets there is an outflow not found on the income statement we might, might have borrowed some money. It is not there here. So in addition to the income statement items, we have balance sheet items for in and out of cash, outflow of cash. Therefore, a cash flow statement is to be prepared in three sections that what is the cash generated from operating activities? What is the cash generated or used in investing activities? and what is the cash received in or paid back using the financing activities? So it reconciles the cash flow statement reconciles net income with the cash flows from operations. So we can this is a great advantage to the company that what is the amount cash generated from the core operations of the business? Core operations means if it is a retail business only from the buying and selling of goods, what amount of cash is generated? 
that you can find out from cash flow statement. A cash flow statement explains is the liquidity of a firm and it is prepared periodically as in when the finan other financial statements are prepared like income statement, uh, return earning statement, balance sheet, etc. Here, as we discussed that the cash flows are to be calculated in three sections, operations, investing, and financing. Operating the cash generated from the operations concentrates on just only the cash generated from the, the core operations of the business. In a sense, if it is a retail business, buying and selling of goods. So to buy, what are all the cash we used and while selling, what are all the cash we received is to be mentioned under operations, cash flows from operations. Investing, you need to concentrate on the whether the fixed assets of the business increased or decreased. Increased means the asset increases but cash decreases because we pay cash now to, to acquire the asset. The fixed assets and investments decrease means we sold some assets so cash balance will increase. So investing activities only we need to see the fixed asset portion of the balance sheet non-current assets. Financing activities, financing activities we need to observe from the balance sheet long-term liabilities plus shareholders equity. Shareholders equity. These two items are to be taken into account in financing activities. Say long-term liability increased loan from bank loan from bank last year nothing now it this year it is 1.2 million means there was no loan at all but this year there is a loan of 1.2 million means what you borrowed money when you borrow money cash comes in that should be taken as inflow likewise issuance of share capital bonds loans this and all are inflows when you pay them off like last year loan was 1.3 million and this year it is 1.2 million means you paid off 100,000 it's an outflow so the any changes in long-term liabilities and shareholders equity should be presented on the financing activity now we understand that the cash flow statement is to be prepared in three sections operating investing and financing activities now what is cash? Cash includes cash and cash equivalents. Cash equivalents means the, the marketable securities, yeah, uh, treasury bills, any investment funds which can be converted back into cash in a short period of time. Even in foreign currency, your bank account, both current and savings account. These are all to be treated as cash equivalents. The uses of cash external uses of cash so we need to see that whether the company is able to manage the, the cash to, to have a smooth flow of the operations whether we are generating the cash flows from operations efficiently see when we say the cash flows from operating activities cash flows from investing activities and cash flows from financing activities this is what the cash generated from our business and this amount should be enough to buy our assets. So if you have any equation of fixed assets, you may have minus balance. And this amount is to be contributed by operating activities cash flow. And you borrowed, say, some amount in the previous months, previous years. This is repaid. And the repayment is only done from, say, excess of the cash flows from operating activities. So it's a good sign that uh, we um, generated sufficient amount of cash flows from the core operations of the business to acquire fixed assets, to repay loans in due course, maybe after two years or three years. Whereas if you get minus balance here in operating activities, it means that year long we do the business and the amount is not enough to pay even our operating expenses. And even the use of the cash flow statement is to assess how much amount of you know obligations we repaid back and what amount of dividend we paid to our shareholders 
this shows very clearly that what is our capacity in, uh, in now to repay our liabilities and pay our shareholders on time de demand. And also, it provides information about the effectiveness of the firm's uh, uh, firm to convert the revenue into cash. Means you are selling goods, you have AV sales like 5 million, but the company is facing problems of cash or uh, non, you know, uh, the cash is non, not sufficient to pay even salaries to the company. So you have lots of receivables in the market had to be collected. And we have lots of issues with the operating expenses, not enough cash. We do not have enough cash. So this is going into accounts receivable. Means what your operating activity section is giving either zero or minus amount. You have lots of receivables, but not collected on time. So it shows the efficient information about how effectively we are converting our current assets into our sales into cash. Also, the cash flow statement estimates or anticipate the company's need for additional financing, whether we need, we are in the need of money or we have surplus money to repay our loans or acquire the assets. The cash flow statement objectives, the preparation include the, to assess the liquidity, whether the company is maintaining good liquidity, and what amount of dividend we are paying to our shareholders. So it explains about dividend policy, um, and also to, to, to comment on investment and financing decisions. Cash flow from operating activities. Cash flows from operating activities uh, is a main section of cash flow statement. Uh, it is prepared in uh, two methods, direct, indirect. So any cash received from the core operations of the business should be mentioned here. And any non-operating activities, like any amount of interest income, dividends from investments, any other items that are all to be shown separately. Cash payments to suppliers, employees, and all should be shown in the operating activities and uh, taxes other expenses should also be shown under this section because the income statement was prepared under you know the accrual accounting system and, and uh, now we are converting it back into the cash system investing activities purely in the balance sheet what you need to do is well well um, concentrating on investing activities let me prepare a t balance sheet here We have current assets, fixed assets, total assets. These assets are acquired by current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and shareholder equity. Okay. So when you prepare the cash flows from operating activities under indirect method, the changes in current assets and current liabilities will go to operating activities section. Any changes in the financing or uh, fixed assets will go to investing activities. And any changes in long-term liabilities and shareholders activity, activity will go to financing activity. So just remember this image so that you can easily um, prepare cash flow statement. So we are here now, investing activities. We should only concentrate on the inflow and outflow of fixed assets. That is property, plant and equipment. You see the beginning of the year, you see the value of the same at the end of the year. Say for example, our company had a land account beginning of the year zero, and now it is say $300,000. $300,000. What does it mean? We purchased land during this year. So January 1st, beginning balance, nothing. 31st December, ending balance is 300,000. Land, the fixed asset increased here. The impact of increase in fixed asset will be on cash balance. Cash balance will decrease. So any increase in fixed assets is outflow. So increase in fixed asset is outflow. 
increase in fixed assets is outflow of cash. Cash goes out. So cash outflow. Likewise, say for example, we had an investment value of say 500,000. Now it is zero. Means what we sold the investments. It is zero at the end of the year. So decrease in fixed assets, including investments, is an inflow. Cash comes in. Simply you need to see the change in the fixed assets and investments on the balance sheet so that you can know that whether whether there is a cash inflow or outflow. And in the case of financing activities, you need to concentrate on long-term liabilities, shareholder equity. Say for example, long-term liabilities, loan from bank, beginning of the year zero, now it is 1.2 million. Loan balance increased, means cash balance will also increase when we receive loan. And share capital, say we had 5 million share capital, now it is 5,300,000. We should some more shares worth of $300,000. That should also be taken as inflow. Any treasury stock becomes outflow. Loans, bonds issued, mortgages, this and all come under financing activities. When they increase, it's an inflow. When they decrease, it's an outflow. And one important point is that any cash payment, cash payment to the shareholders as dividends should also go to financing activity. Now, operating activities, operating activities mainly concentrates on income statement items, current assets, changes in current asset and changes in current liabilities. Like, you know, salaries, you know, suppliers payments, any operating expenses, interest payment, tax payments, advance to suppliers all come under operating activities. Investing activities, fixed asset section of balance sheet. Financing activities, long-term liabilities and shareholders equity of the bal balance sheet. So current assets, current liabilities go to operating activities. Financing activities will go to, oh, sorry, uh, the fixed asset will go to investing activities. Long-term liabilities and shareholder, shareholders equity will go to financing activities. And also retain earnings account will go to financing activities for the payment of dividend. So income statement, retain earnings statement and balance sheet help us to prepare cash flow statements. From these statements, we can classify the cash inflows and outflows. Now the format of a cash flow statement is, you need to prepare cash flow statement in this format, name of the company, statement of cash flows or cash flow statement, and then mention the period, currency, First, first you need to mention operating activities. What is the cash generated from operating activities? A, preferably this should be positive. Amount A should be positive to cover B and C and give some extra balance also. That means that the company is doing well. So investing activities, this is due to changes in the fixed assets. Financing activities will give you net change in the cash during the year. You generated cash, you purchased some assets, you repaid some liabilities. So D is a total of A, B and C. If it increases, the, the, the company is enjoying good amount of cash flows. But if this total is minus balance, A plus B plus C is a negative amount, it is not a good sign. Means what? We do not have enough cash balance from entire year operations for investing activities, operating activities and financing activities. And you add it to the beginning cash balance, you will get ending cash balance. This ending balance, cash balance is exactly equal to the cash balance on the balance sheet. In the cash balance, in the balance sheet current asset, we mentioned CMAIP cash, marketable securities, accounts inventory and prepayments. This amount should match with the, this ending balance. That is D 
a plus b plus c is d d plus beginning balance that is closing balance now closing balance will be equivalent to the cash balance of you know balance sheet some non cash investing and financing activities will also be there let us see that amounts before that operating activities a cash flow operating cash flows from operating activities can be determined using two methods direct method indirect method unless otherwise it is specifically mentioned always use indirect method most of the companies like to use indirect method because direct method requires lots of you know efforts to 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 find out all the cash receipts from the operations and all the cash payments on operations individually whereas indirect method just takes the net income as the base and all the non cash items will be adjusted non cash expenses non cash losses and uh, you know non cash incomes non operating income should be also adjusted along with the current assets and current liabilities so the most popular method is indirect method remember the direct or indirect method question comes only for the calculation of cash flows from the operating activities not for investing not for financing the direct method is so simple that all cash collections are to be summarized all the cash payments are to be summarized but in practical it is very difficult to get all the information about cash in and cash out for entire year therefore we prefer to use indirect method again to reiterate an important point that the direct or indirect method is only for the in the determination of cash flows from operating activities but not for any investing or financing activities investing and financing activities is same no method at all okay in operating only we have the the uh, uh, direct method and indirect method so while um, calculating the cash flows from operating activities in the indirect method you will adjust the net income you will adjust the net income on the cash basis comparing current assets and current liabilities so current assets and current liabilities what you need to do is here take the income as the base and all add back all the non cash expenses like depreciation amortization um uncollectible amounts yeah not only this loss on sale of assets then discount on issue of shares discount on issue of shares bonds etc increase in current liabilities and decrease in current asset this should be from your balance sheet so decrease in current assets increase in current liabilities just try to remember dial decrease in current assets increase in current liabilities should be added to net income likewise decrease in current liabilities increase in current assets so just remember increase in current assets decrease in current liabilities should be deducted to get cash flows from operating activities so you have non cash expenses like depreciation amortization and collectible loss on sale of asset discount on issue of shares and bonds then dial should be added gain on sale of asset also premium on issuance of bonds shares should be also be deducted shares should also be deducted along with iadl this dial and iadl are from balance sheet current asset section and current liabilities section this this amounts are to be taken from there so you will get cash flows from operating it now we understand that to the net income we need to adjust non cash expenses and the non cash items like depreciation amortization provisions reserves loss on sale of assets and investments discount on issue of shares and bonds written off a uh, decrease in current assets and increase in current liabilities should also be added 
gain and sell of assets, premium on issue of shares and bonds. Any increase in current asset and decrease in current liability should also be detected to arrive at cash flows from operating activities using indirect method. Direct method is simply receive all the receipts, all the receipts from operations, all the receipts from the operations, all the payments on expenses, operating expenses will give you operating cash flow. Cash revenues and cash expenses will give you operating cash flow, positive or negative. But what happens to these non-cash expenses? Non-cash expenses like depreciation, amortization, loss and sale of its uh, asset, etc. We reduced from revenues and uh, we received a reduced net income. But in actual, there is no cash outflow. In actual, there is no cash outflow. So here, because of these non-cash expenses, your revenues get reduced. Therefore, they, they, they are to be adjusted in operating activities. So do, do we do not have any cash expense on that. When we sell an asset, when we sell an asset, say for example, uh, 5,000 worth of asset is sold for say for example, 2,000. Straight away, you cannot say there is a loss of 3,000 because there is a depreciation of 1,500 say for example. So the net, uh, the, the historical value of the asset was 5,000. The depreciation as on the date of sale accumulated was 1,500. So net book value, the carrying value of the asset is 3,500, which we sold for 2,000. So there is a loss of 1,500. This 1,500 should go to operating section, operating activity as loss. And this 2,000 is a cash inflow. This should go to investing activities. So you should remember this always that any depreciation and loss that should be added to the operating activity section and any money received from the sale of assets should go to investing activity. Next, the, the net income, net income from the core operations should be adjusted in the, in the you know, operating section using indirect method adding non-cash items, deducting non-cash incomes, and adjusting the short-term items, current assets and current liabilities. Some special topics include direct exchange, partial cash investing and financing activities, and cash dividends declared. Let me explain one by one. These special topics do not appear on the cash flow statement. Like say, for example, uh, we purchased a land, we purchased a land of say $1.2 million. So obviously there will be an impact on cash balance. Cash will go out. But what happens is, say land, the seller, the real estate company said, we want your company shares. We wanted to invest the money in some companies. We like your company. Equivalent to this, we want to invest in your company by buying your company shares or bonds. So one, land. At the time of purchasing the land, there is no cash outflow. At the time of you know, exchange of the shares to this real estate company, we did not sell this 1,200 for cash, so there is no cash outflow. It is just a, like a barter system. We received land and issued shares no cash outflow, no cash outflow for the exchange of land for shares and no cash inflow. Therefore, such kind of these transactions which do not have any cash inflow and outflow should be presented in the footnotes of the cash flow statement but not in the body of the cash flow statement. Cash flow statement should not contain this type of 1.2 million transaction because there is no impact of cash. It is just only an exchange of one asset with one or uh, other capital issue, issuance. So that the, it, it shouldn't be taken into account anywhere. Uh, if any kind of, you know, the partial investment takes place, partial cash investing and financing activities take place. Say, for example, uh, um, we purchased a land of $10,000, okay? 
and we paid $1,000 in cash and remaining $9,000 we we used you know in a uh, by pay by taking a loan okay, notes payable we gave them a promissory note so in that case you should only write 1000 in the cash flow statement this 10000 and uh, 9000 are not to be recorded 1000 worth of land you should record in the cash flow statement and uh, the 1000 will have an impact on your cash flow but 9000 is just treated as a liability so it it should it should be mentioned 9000 should be mentioned in the notes if you if you mention any kind of partial payments in the calculation so the cash cash payment for the purchase of land is 1000 but in actual actual uh, you know the the value of the land was 10000 and you gave a promissory note of 9000 so you shouldn't take anything like this in the in the you know uh, uh, cash flow statement you should take only 1000 increase in the uh, investing activities other examples of direct exchange like conversion of bonds into stock so the bondholders may be converted back into say common shares when bondholders are converted into common shares we are not paying any cash to the bondholders and we are not uh, collecting any bond you know cash from the bondholders to become common shareholders it's only a conversion only the ownership of bonds will become transferred to the common shares any asset is purchased with the shares any any asset is purchased with a mortgage mortgage in a sense say we purchase a, a, a bulldozer for our company but bulldozer company has a tie with the one bank so we don't need to pay any amount we have to submit our documents to bank bank will see the eligibility that whether we are worth of taking this loan or not yes bank feels that you are worth of taking this loan bank will pay to the dealer of this you know bulldozer the bulldozer will be delivered to your business bank pays money to the dealer and you will get asset on mortgage basis so you'll have to pay installments to the bank installment will be an outflow but not full value of the bulldozer and when dividend is declared dividend is declared on particular date dividend is paid on a particular date your cash flow statement will have an impact only on the payment date but not on the declaration date there may be a gap between these two dates so on the declaration there is no impact on the cash flow statement only on the date of payment you'll have you know impact on the cash flow statement also any shares are given at free of cost to the shareholders existing shareholders we call it a stock dividend like bonus shares etc that shouldn't take place in the cash flow statement because there is no impact on the cash means say for every 10 shares we are giving two shares at free of cost so the number of shares will increase just for nothing no impact on the cash at all we are giving these two shares for every 10 shares held by a shareholder so it is only a normal general entry but there is no cash inflow towards this another two shares stock splits like a short a share a share may be split into uh, more shares like you know uh, one share will become five shares it is an only internal adjustment that one share will now become four shares there's no cash in no cash out so this also will not affect cash flow statement cash dividend only when it is paid it should be shown as financing activity but declared and all are not to be shown in the cash flow statement this is the end of uh, the cash flow statement hope you understand we'll see in the next session with uh, some calculations have a good